ಗುರು ಬಿಯೋ ನಮಗ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪುಮ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾಶ್ರಮ್ ಟುಡೆ ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕೋಟ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ರೀಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೀಟ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ and the different scales we use to measure temperature difference between heat and temperature then we saw about the different types of thermometer and why we are using digital thermometer nowadays that also we were discussing in the previous sessions and also what are the precautions that we should uh, use in order to use a clinical and laboratory thermometer today session we are going to see the modes of heat transfer before that let us have the recap of the last sessions so as we know that heat is a form of energy so the difference in temperature between two bodies a certain type of energy flows between them this energy is called heat energy when this heat energy flows into a body it warms the body when it flows out of the body it cools the body in other words when a hot body and a cold body are in contact the hot body loses heat energy while the cold body gains heat energy so from this we conclude heat energy flows from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature heat flow continuously till the temperature of both the hot and cold body becomes the same whose value will be the somewhere in between the temperature of the hot body and the cold body so now let's see the mode of heat transfer what do you mean by the mode of heat transfer the flow of heat from one body to another or from one part to another part of the same body is called transfer of heat there are three modes of heat transfer conduction convection and radiation so today we will discuss about conduction in detail before that why mercury is considered as an ideal liquid for thermometers it is the only liquid metal therefore they can be easily seen it does not stick to the walls of the thermometer it expands and contracts uniformly with the rise and fall in temperature mercury the, the freezing point of mercury is minus 39 degrees celsius and the boiling point is 357 degrees celsius and the normal pressure therefore it can be used over a wide temperature range how to use a clinical thermometer how we are supposed to use a clinical thermometer is to use a clinical thermometer the steps determine the value of one small scale division on the thermometer scale for this count the number of small divisions that is small divisions between two big amounts then we will calculate how we are supposed to calculate this value of one small division is equal to difference of temperature between two big amounts divided by number of small divisions now let's see about the temperature scales celsius scale it was discovered by adder celsius that i told you in the previous session the range of the celsius scale is 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius the freezing point of uh, water that is the uh, freezing point of ice is taken as 0 degree celsius and the boiling point of pure water is 100 degree celsius now let's see about the fahrenheit scale it was discovered by the fahrenheit the fahrenheit scale ranges from 32 degree fahrenheit to 212 degree fahrenheit so now let's discuss about the modes of heat transfer there are three ways in which the heat is transferred conduction convection radiation now let's discuss about conduction conduction is a mode of transfer of heat that requires a medium 
he takes place in all three states of matter but it is much dominant in solids only heat energy transfers from one place to another through molecular vibrations in solids these vibrations travel in the form of heat waves of very high frequency so when we want to talk about this conduction we are going to discuss the various activities in conduction so uh, the particles of a solid vibrate about a fixed point in case of conduction the particles are very tightly packed and they cannot move around freely however they can vibrate about a fixed point so how we are supposed to define the mode of heat transfer is the methods by which heat is transferred from one region to another are called the modes of heat transfer the next heat conduction conduction is heat transfer by means of molecular agitation within a material without any motion of the material as a whole it occurs through direct contact example if one end of a metal rod is at a higher temperature the energy will be transferred down the rod towards the colder end because the higher speed particles will collide with the slower ones with the net transfer of energy to the slower ones as long as the objects are in contact transfer of heat will continue until the temperature of the objects is the same what are the conditions for the conduction of heat is heat conduction from an object takes place only under the following two conditions the two objects should be in direct contact the two objects should be at different temperature how can we define conduction so conduction is a mode of heat transfer in which the heat passes through a body from its hotter to the colder parts or from a hotter body to a colder one in contact with it we have seen some examples in the previous slides now let's see few examples of conduction think of a metal spoon in a pot of water being heated the fast moving particles of the fire collide with the slow moving particles of the cool part because of these collisions the slower particles move faster and heat is transferred then the particles of the pot collide with the particles in the water which collide with the particles at one end of the spoon as the particles move faster the petal spoon gets hotter this process of conduction is repeated all along the metal until the entire spoon is hot in solids the constant particles are very closely packed they can only vibrate about their mean positions when one end of a metal strip or a rod is heated the particles at that end absorb energy and start vibrating more rapidly these rapidly vibrating particles collide with their neighbors and transfer a part of heat energy to them as a result these particles also start vibrating more rapidly and it causes their neighbor to vibrate more rapidly this process continues until the last particle also starts vibrating more rapidly thus heat energy is transferred from particle to particle through the whole length of the strip now let's see the metals are the good thermal conductors because heat transfer in metals takes place due to free electrons inside metals which move very fast and transfer heat from one place to another on the basis of heat conduction the materials are divided into two group good conductors and poor conductors the materials which can conduct heat at an appreciably high rate are called good conductors and materials which do not allow heat to flow through them easily are called poor conductors now let's see the we'll prove that water is a poor conductor of heat we'll take the materials required are ice copper wire gauge boiling tube so wrap a piece of ice in copper wire gauge and drop it in a large glass tube containing cold water hold the glass tube in a slanting position as you can see in the slide in a slanting position and heat just below the water surface until water starts boiling what happens to the ice ice does not melt the experiment what do you observe from this experiment the experiment 
shows that heat from upper part of the water has not reached its lower part. So from this we conclude water is a poor conductor of heat. And one more thing, woolen clothes keep us warm during winter because wool is a poor conductor of heat and it has air trapped in between the fibers. And also you can see this uh, poor conductors examples are wood, paper, glass, asbestos, bake light, plastics etc. Then there are some uses of conductors and insulators. Cooking pots and pans are made of metals. The conductors to ensure quick and fast supply of heat. Pot holders or handles are made up of wood or plastic because the non-conductors will avoid the burning of the hands. Table mats are made from insulators like hood or cloth to avoid burning of table tops. Plastic foam and fiberglass insulators are used in the walls and ceilings of homes to keep them cooler in summer and warmer in winter. A saucepan has a handle of non-conducting material while its body is made up of a good conductor of heat. And uh, non-conductors of heat are used for making handles of the cooking utensils so that even hot utensils can be lifted easily. So, good conductors of heat, metals and their alloys are used for making cooking utensils. Why does metal feel colder? Metal is a conductor, wood is an insulator. Metal conducts the heat away from your hands. Wood does not conduct the heat away from your hands as well as the metal. So the wood feels warmer than the metal. From this, we conclude metal is a good conductor and wood is a insulator. So non-conductors of heat such as bricks, asbestos sheets, mud etc. used in a house building do not allow heat from outside to enter the house during summer. These materials during winter do not allow heat from inside to go out. Many insulators contain tiny pockets of trapped air to prevent transfer of heat. For example, we saw in the before slide, woolen clothes do not allow our body heat to escape to the surroundings during winters due to trapped air. Glass will foam such as uh, PUF that is polyurethane foam or used in ice box and refrigerators to prevent outside heat from entering the refrigerator. So now let's see this activity to show that solids such as metal by conduction. That is you can see in this picture you have a long thin metallic strip or rod. Fix a few Nails on the strip at equal gaps with the help of wax. Clamp the strip to a stand. You can see in this picture. Now place a burner below the free, free end of the strip. Note on the order in which nails begin to drop. The nail nearest to the flame drops first. Then the next and finally the, the nail farthest from the flame. This happens because as the heat travels gradually, from the hot end of the metallic strip to its colder end, the wax melts and the nails fall down. From this, we can conclude heat travels through solids by conduction and the gradual flow of heat in a solid from the hotter end moves to the colder end is called conduction of heat. Now let's see with other activity, different solids conduct heat to different extent. So here we can take copper, iron, and glass. So there are three rods which is placed here. Place them on a tripod stand and fix a small nail near one end of each rod using wax. Heat the other end of the rods equally with a Bunsen burner. Note down the time taken by the nails to drop down. You will note that the nail from the copper end drops first followed by the iron rod because they are the good conductors of heat. heat. We know already metals are good conductors of heat. The nail on the glass does not fall even after many times. 
This experiment shows that copper and iron can conduct heat, whereas glass does not. Copper conducts heat more easily than iron. Now let's uh, recap few definitions here. The flow of heat from one body to another, or from one part to another of the same body, is called transfer of heat. Heat transfer can be explained by conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is a mode of heat transfer in which heat passes through a body from a hotter to the colder parts, or from a hotter body to a colder body in contact with each other. So the materials which allow heat to flow through them easily are called good conductors of heat. Examples: silver, copper, brass, etc., are good conductors of heat. The materials which do not allow heat to flow through them are called non-conductors of heat. Wood, paper, etc., that is rubber, they are called as insulators. Here you have the one word. You can find out the answers for this. Let's have the revision of the previous. Sessions that is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body is called. You can choose whether it is heat or temperature. The term hot and cold are dash terms. Fahrenheit scale is indicated by the thermometer used to measure our body temperature is called. So these are the few questions that you can use it for your uh, recapping your previous sessions. Now let's see. Do you know? Nowadays, the term good conductor of heat refers to the term conductor of heat. So, the term conductor should be used in place of good conductor. Many people use the term good conductor. It should be noted that now we don't use this term. Instead, the term conductor is used. Conductors, insulators, we use it as we learned in our class 6. That's what I have mentioned it before itself about this. Now, with this session... We are uh, going to wind up with this conduction. In the next session, we will be seeing about the other two mode of heat transfer, that is convection and radiation. With this, children, you all recap with the activities which I had spoke about this session. Hope you would have enjoyed this session. Now, uh, every term which I had used here like uh, conduction then uh, conductors insulators examples and all you use it here you have some oral questions you can read it a spoon is dipped in a cup of hot milk name the process by which the spoon absorbs heat from the milk mention the condition that must be satisfied for heat transfer by con conduction that is i mentioned you two conditions what determines the direction of flow of heat between two objects in contact which property of a solid is employed when it is used for making handle of a pressure cooker? Which of the following is an insulator? With this, you can recap this session once again. And then you can use these questions in order to make you more understand about this chapter. The next, we will end up the session with the code. Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity. Thank you children.